<laughs> well, we're going to talk about your friend Donald in a moment, but just before we do that, uh, so what about the new political party? We touched on it when we talked last week. Yeah. Um, this uh, new political party that could uh, could bring in some kind of, in, in your view, some kind of common sense politics into the country, Nigel, when is it going to go ahead? Well, look, I mean, you know, the Brexit party... UKIP was my life, as you know, for a quarter of a century. Yep. <clears throat> I, I, I resigned the leadership of UKIP when we won the mm. referendum because stupidly, really stupidly, I thought the Tories might keep their promise and deliver Brexit. In fact, we finished up with Mrs <laughs> May and a complete mm. betrayal. By which time, UKIP, I'm afraid, <laughs> had been infiltrated by a pretty rum crew, let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. um, the far right, call it what you will. So I formed the Brexit party to try and get Brexit back on track, and it was a spectacular success. Yeah. But whatever form of Brexit we finish up with in a couple of weeks' time, and I suspect it won't be as good a one as I would like, and Mr Biden's got a bit to do with that. But the question is, you know, there are lots of people in the Brexit party uh, that wanted Brexit, not just because they wanted to leave Brussels, but because they wanted the country to have a chance to regenerate and move on. And so I've applied for the name Reform UK, um, and the idea of this is that there are many things in Britain that are now hopelessly out <coughs> of date. I mean, just mm. out of date beyond comprehension. Mm. And top of the list is the House of Lords. Yep. 800 of Blair, Cameron, uh, Brown and Boris's mates sitting on those benches. And mm. we just cannot be a credible nation in the 21st century if our second chamber is run by people like that. We and have is it... An Sorry, electoral is... system that doesn't work. Yeah. We have quangos. 12 billion quid has gone into test and trace. It doesn't bloody well work. <laughs> Nothing's actually <laughs> working. So, you know, the, the point of Reform UK is to be a radical reforming mm. party that brings British politics into the 21st century. And is it is it true that you were offered a knighthood, that you could have gone into the Lords if you'd behaved yourself? A uh, peerage, yeah, back in 2016. Thank goodness mm. I didn't accept it. Um, because if I had accepted it, I would not have been able to lead the Brexit party and the fight back that was needed, and we'd never have left the European Union on mm. the 31st of January. Because, because you know, that's how the establishment in Britain works, because most people involved in politics mm. do it for rank, mm. position and title. And for me, and James, you've known me 25 years, for me, this has always been a mission. I very nearly became London Mayor for you, Kip. I remember. And, what? <laughs> well, Nigel and I were having a laugh about it. It was more of a joke because we didn't think anybody would get, you know. And then I was, uh, I was, I don't know if you remember this, I was going to do an interview on, on the news at 10 or something like that. And then uh, uh, Mrs W said to me, you've really got to make your mind up. They're taking you seriously. And I hadn't realised until then. And then... then <laughs> then my boss at Talk Radio said, Ofcom have been on, they're complaining. Uh, you can't stay on the air if you're seriously going to become the mayor of London. <laughs> so I declined, but it was quite funny, wasn't it? Yeah, well, there we are. Sometimes jokes are taken seriously, and then you're in yep. real trouble in life, you know. <laughs> now, listen, I was uh, talking to a very good friend of mine yesterday, and uh, she's convinced that Trump is the devil incarnate. Mm. And and she's very right wing too, so uh, you know, big fan of Brexit, everything else, but absolutely convinced, like quite a lot of people are, um, that Trump was just absolutely—he's nasty, he's a bad loser, he's a horrible man. Tell tell people who feel like that why they've got it wrong. Well, those that make those accusations, of course, and, we, and, and you know, and we hear it constantly, are those who refuse to accept the legitimacy of his election in 2016 who have lied for four years about the fact that it's Russia what done it, that it was all a stolen election. Um, and when Trump stands up and says, hang on, guys, there could be electoral fraud here, I want a court to decide, suddenly, you know, he's the guy that's doing wrong. The mm -hmm. biter bit, if you like. Look, I think Trump's style is just a bit too over the top for a lot of British people. You know, he's a New Yorker. It's all a bit out there. All I can say is this. There are very, very few people in politics who go in, promise the electorate a set of things, and then over four years do their damnedest to deliver on their promises. Mm -hmm. And I admire him hugely for that. I have to say also on a personal level, you know, away from the public attacks and his, his often quite aggressive responses, he's actually enormous fun to be with. And your friend, James, uh, that you spoke to, mm -hmm. is in for a shock. 
And here's the shock. Trump was the most pro-UK president we've seen for 30 years. And we're now heading towards a new president. It looks like, unless there is sufficient legal evidence to say otherwise, we're now heading to a new president who thinks Brexit is a mistake, loves the European Union, but worst of all, supports Irish nationalism and mm. is happy in recent times to be photographed with people who attempted to murder British army officers in Northern Ireland. Be in no doubt, Joe Biden is no fan of this country and we're in for a difficult period with America. Why has Donald Trump in that case um, not fought back against the accusations that he's sexist, he treats women like uh, playthings, he's racist, he's just, you know, he doesn't take anything seriously. Why has he never tried to do something to well, sort of change... The racist stuff, James, is absolute baloney. I mean, he's just managed to secure over a third of the Latino vote and the highest proportion of the black vote any Republican has ever achieved. He's broken into that territory in the most astonishing way. Um, and we're kind of at a point uh, with politics where all the left can do to the right is just, is just to throw terms of abuse at them. Um, and it just, they can try as hard as they like. You know, I mean, the other thing fascinates me. Trump brought in the Muslim ban. He's evil. No, Obama brought in the Muslim ban. It was Obama that stopped people from those seven countries coming in. All Trump did was continue it. Trump is evil. He separates women and children at the Mexican border and puts them into cages. Well, who built the cages? Obama. And this is what we've had for you. Why years. doesn't he answer some... He says it's fake news and that's it, and this goes away. Why because doesn't he actually... You cannot spend, James, you can, And I know this. Mm -hmm. I know this, having led UKIP and the Brexit Party against the establishment, against the big businesses, against most of mainstream media, against the established political order. If you spend the whole of your life defending yourself... You know, you're a murderer. No, I'm mm. not. You're a paedophile. No, I'm not. If you spend your whole life defending yourself against negative accusations, you never get a chance to put mm. your message out. And Trump, and Trump has decided, as much as he can, yeah, he bites back with its fake news, but he's trying to get his message out. And it's a very, very difficult tightrope to walk. The big criticism at the moment is that he's refusing to accept defeat because he's concerned about being taken to court and the court cases that they may uh, hold against him once he isn't president anymore. Well, there's no doubt that uh, you know, the state will be as vindictive against him out of office as it's been mm. within office. But look, you know, this idea he's refusing to accept defeat, they, both in America and in Britain, spent years trying to stop Brexit, to overturn Brexit, and to delegitimize the president. The bad losers aren't on Trump's side of the argument, because if a judge says his objections aren't real, he will accept it. And it's all, as far as I'm concerned, boot on the other foot.